Just outside the small town of Glenrose, there is a place where endangered species roam free. A place with a goal to keep a safe space for these animals to live and to teach people just like you along the way. Because when we teach people to love the nature around them, it won't just breed more animals, it will breed compassion for all kinds. So join us as we explore Fossil Rim Wildlife Center. Welcome back, guys. So far, we've given you a look at two species whose populations need help, but they aren't quite endangered either. This next species, though, is different. Have you ever heard of the addicts? No, not the attic. The addicts. Thanks, Drake, for the illustration. The addicts is one of the more social species we have here at Fossil Rim. They can routinely be seen chasing after cars if not given their food pellets, and they are also one of the more entertaining species to watch on property, whether it's getting that one itchy spot or interacting with other animals around them. Unfortunately for the addicts, the last time a research team went out to tally up how many were still in the wild, they came back with some devastating numbers. They found that the addicts is just about as close to extinction in the wild as it possibly could be, and is classified as critically endangered. In a 2016 report from the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or the IUCN, it said only three were found in the wild. While hunting and removal of live addicts is illegal in Niger, the animals have still suffered a massive disturbance from humans. Okay, so we talked about the scary stuff for this species, but let's talk to one of our animal care staff about the cool features of the addicts. Take it away, Molly. So here at Fossil Rim, we have 63 addicts. Um, there are these guys behind us. This past spring, we had 20 calves born. There is a very good chance that Fossil Rim has more in Glen Rose, Texas than we do in Africa, which is pretty remarkable to be able to say. So these guys are native to the deserts of Africa and they are designed to live in the desert comfortably uh, compared to some other species. So they're a stark white color, which is gonna reflect a lot of heat. Uh, they also have hooves that are much kind of flatter and wider than you would think of a normal deer, but it almost acts like snowshoes. So they have a better base for when they're walking on, on sand. They're a very hardy species, so they actually do really well in controlled environments. Um, they can survive on very little. That's another adaptation of being a, de a desert species. They're a little adapted in captivity. They'll, uh, they'll eat pellets and stuff like that, and they require more water, but in the desert, they can survive on very little. Thanks, Molly. So a few things that she touched on were adaptations to their environment. And as Molly said, these antelopes are from the desert regions of Africa, previously living in Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Sudan, Tunisia, and Western Sahara, but are now only known to exist in Chad and Niger. So one of the first characteristics that Molly mentioned was their stark white color, which will reflect heat, which is a pretty incredible and vital adaptation for an animal from the desert. But what's really cool, pun intended, is the fact that in the winter, these animals will grow a darker coat and their shoulders and chest neck area will have more of a gray or brown coloration. And if stark white reflects the sun and heat, what does the darker color do? Well, it pulls in the heat for when it gets cold. Next, she mentioned those really cool hooves. Addicts have short, thick legs and wide, flat hooves with flat soles. This helps prevent them from sinking into the sand. Kind of like Molly said, like snowshoes. The addix walks by throwing its wide hoofed feet sideways to avoid brushing against the opposite leg, but places one foot behind the other, leaving a single line of tracks. This animal runs in a flat gallop and appears stiff kneed due to very little leg flexing while running. It's considered one of the slowest runners of all antelopes, but with less predators in the desert, speed wasn't necessary. That is, until humans became more advanced hunters and then began disrupting their habitat. So lastly, Molly mentioned this species has the ability to live on very little. And in fact, the addicts can live on very small amounts of water. With that being said, how often do you think an addict needs to drink water? A, once per week. B, once per month. C, once per year. Or D, possibly never. I'll give you some time to think on it. Okay, so get this, scientists believe they can go their entire lives without drinking water. What? So how do they stay hydrated, you might ask? Well, 
they actually get the moisture they need from plant life. But as Molly said, here at Fossil Rim, they have more creature comforts like, oh, you know, water. So they will drink from their ponds and their pasture more frequently. Thanks for learning about the Addix antelope with us. And even though for them, extinction in the wild is likely, you'll be glad to know that zoos and conservation centers have large populations of this species. There are more than 2,000 addicts in facilities in the US and Europe. So because of places like this, it may be possible to reintroduce the addicts into their native land, giving this species another shot. All right, guys, this is Garrett signing out from Fossil Rim. Until next time, remember to stay wild.